Hello, everybody. Today is Monday, October 30th, and this is episode 46 of Block Digest. Today, we're at block height 492,386. And so, not to forget this time, we've got a special guest to introduce today, Alejandro uh, Delator. I, I got that right from uh, btc.com. Correct. Hi, nice how's it going? You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. We've got, Thanks for uh, having me. A resident alcoholic, CEO Goodman. <laughs> you guys are so hard on me about that. It's okay. Uh, yeah, th thanks everyone um, for watching. And uh, actually, we had almost three streams. You had uh, Chris Troy's, Richard Hart, and now us almost all at the same time. Bitcoin media is blowing up. Thanks for watching today. Mm -hmm. We've got a uh, regular meme artist, Rick. Hey, everyone. And Mr. Acknix, we will see if he talks today. So, uh, just how drunk are you, Theo? I'm, not <laughs> drink I'm drinking water. I'm drinking water. Sure. That's not drunk. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, today I guess we're gonna we're gonna start off a little different order. We're gonna go fake news first. Vietnam is. Banning Bitcoin, kind of, sort of, maybe not. Uh, it's not really clear on any level. Uh, this Block Explorer website at first pretty much is saying that Bitcoin is illegal, period, uh, subject to a $9,000 fine. But a clarification issued afterwards. Uh, Where did that thing go? Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, links disorganized. Some place in the web of links I've provided, there was a clarification from a uh, state uh, media company from Vietnam that pretty much what was being explicitly declared as illegal is the use of Bitcoin as a currency, and it was because of a, a major university that was very publicly uh, broadcasting in the media the fact that they were considering accepting Bitcoin for tuition. And so the uh, the central banks and authorities of the government felt the need to kind of reiterate that Bitcoin is not a legal tool for commerce or a currency in the country. And so it's it's kind of a little unclear where this leaves things now because it, it was explicitly made illegal or stated to be illegal to issue or utilize a currency for uh, trade and commerce. So obviously, just based on that wording, it sounds kind of like mining might not be legal, as, as that is obviously the issuance process. And it's obviously not legal to use it to purchase goods and services, but it kind of leaves it up in the air as to whether just investing or owning any cryptocurrencies is uh, legal or not. If anybody uh, wants to kind of pontificate about this with me. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> I was reading that statement from the university and it's really kind of unfortunate because it seems like they wanted to use this opportunity to sort of uh, teach people about cryptocurrencies and what they called the fourth industrial revolution. And it seemed like, uh, you know, it's a private university there that I'm sure a lot of people spend a lot of money to stay on the forefront of technology. And for them to make this kind of move, it's really unfortunate for Vietnam, I see as a country, because if they really take these steps so early on to stifle innovation and in what could become such a, you know, a global player in, in economics, it just it's sad to see these guys take this step. But, um, you know, I guess this is what comes whenever uh, these countries aren't really paying attention to this to put the regulations in place. Um, I think, you got I think any that, thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I think that certain region right now is experiencing a, a huge boom uh, in in regards to South Korea, Japan. Yeah, I think I think I agree, with Rick. It's uh, it's a pity that they're not um, they're not you know actually moving forward. And but I think I think the I think what the article said was that um, they didn't mention or they did mention Bitcoin, but it was more like. Uh, um, they said these certain things were legal, and they didn't say Bitcoin was illegal, but they just didn't mention it. So it's de facto illegal. Um, I, I, I guess it, it's a pity for them. I, I mean, I mean, Japan and South Korea are, are really pushing forward with with Bitcoin, and um, um, it's 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 not a smart move to 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 do that. It's not a smart move at all. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, especially. 
Oh, okay, Theo. Uh, gotta, I gotta yeah. retain my rants inside. It's all good. Them. I just wanted to say <laughs> that uh, if people want to read uh, something that I that I would uh, trust is um, accurate, you can check out blog.bitcoin.vn from Bitcoin Vietnam. And uh, shout out to Dominic uh, at the exchange there. And they did, of course, they have it in Vietnamese, but they also did a good translation regarding the FUD. And, you know, there's two main points uh, from the press, le press release that Bitcoin is not a legal currency and two, not a legal means of payment in Vietnam. And uh, I believe that's, that's also how it is in China. You know, you can't, you're not allowed to buy stuff online with Bitcoin in China, but it doesn't mean that Bitcoin is illegal in itself. And uh, that's, it sounds a little bit similar. And also you have to, you, you can't, um, it's required to be listed as a domestic currency, Vietnamese dong, VND. So you can't list things for sale in BTC. It has to be in VND. And there are some other things, but it doesn't mean that it's um, banned so to say, but it does make a good headline and, you know, we're probably giving them indirect traffic too by, <laughs> by talking about it, but that's okay. You know, you have these things, uh, Kyle Torpy, uh, who we often give shout outs to, uh, he said he, what, uh, he normally deletes things that are incorrect, um, off his Twitter, but he said he wasn't sure about this one. So he didn't delete it. Um, but it is in the but it is in the discussion of the of the tweet, like you know about how he's not a hundred percent sure. Um, so I think that's at least that's cool when people do tweet stuff that they put in the comments. Hey, I'm not actually not a hundred percent sure now that I read it again, because uh, you know things get started really quick, especially in Bitcoin with everyone overreacting. Uh, so that's cool that he just said, Hey, I'm not a hundred percent sure, so I'm going to leave it up for now. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's banned. Right. All right. So I guess you want to slide into the the long list of two uh, X related updates we got going on. Uh, sure. Give us one. This. Well, this first one I think is pretty interesting. Uh, Trezor is replacing BitPay's exchange rate API in their web wallet. And like, I, I think this this kind of illustrates, you know, a lot of these companies that signed the New York agreement and are trying to push through with it, like they're they're not irreplaceable. Like it, it, in a marketplace, you know, if if you're not providing what what the the consumers of that market want, like they're going to go somewhere that does. I mean, this isn't the first instance we've seen um, with people actually trying to migrate away from BitPay. Uh, I know uh, Nicholas Dorier actually forked their entire uh, payment API. And obviously that doesn't come with the, the entire slew of banking uh, relationships that would enable like quick conversion to fiat. But <clears throat> that is a solution for businesses who would want to accept the Bitcoin and either keep it in Bitcoin or potentially manage the fiat conversion on their own. And there's also been a, a decent number of companies uh, that are just not using BitPay anymore as a payment processor. And it's it's really, it kind of goes to show that, you know, even the big titans in the space who, who might think they have a big lockdown seat at the table, like that's not necessarily true if they just completely ignore what their customers are asking for. And what are the customers asking for? Well, this particular customer customer is asking to uh, stop this contentious work nonsense that creates a never-ending pile of drama for us to sift through. <laughs> well, I think like they just want like their customers want to make sure that they're spending Bitcoin and not uh, Bitcoin two X. Like, I mean, like I, I haven't used BitPay until when once they started making these comments about their ticker and changing things over. It's, uh, I hadn't used my BitPay card in a while anyway, but just sort of confirmed I'm not going to use it. And, you know, it, all I've really got left is the shift card. And I know that Coinbase is really cloudy on this. And it kind of makes me uh, think that, you know, there's a market here for somebody to step up and take over this Bitcoin debit job, because uh, if it's just going to be these B2X guys, I'm, I'm just not going to be using my Bitcoin debit card for a while until uh, somebody decides to actually use the proper chain for that. 
Yeah, it, but it is an interesting discussion because, yeah, who decides what is the BTC ticker? You know, who gets to decide that? And so what's going on in that conversation is, you know, discussing, you know, what what is that? You know, who there is no, who decides that? There's nobody that- We all do, really right? do. Yeah, we all do. That company and Trezor is like, okay, we don't agree with, or we don't want to risk I said, from from Trezor's point of view, I get it. I think some people might think it's political uh, from Trezor's side, maybe, but I get it. They're a wallet provider, um, and for cold storage, not a wallet provider. They they prov you know they make and they want to make hundred percent sure there's no confusion. So I get that. They say, okay, for the time being, at least we can't use that. There's too much craziness. That I totally get. But it is also coming, it also begs the question, you know, who gets to decide, uh, you know, what is the BTC ticker? And I guess, I guess, you know, each company decides for themselves, uh, you know, what they, what they can, you know, consider the BTC ticker. You know, we had recently Bitcoin.com. I, I don't know what, the, I have no idea what their policy is now, but they had, so, you know, they had these articles saying, yeah, this is, we're going to call, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash, we're going to call the uh, BTC Bitcoin SegWit or something like that. I don't know. You know what I mean? But they made a decision. I don't know if they held to it even. I have not checked. So someone in the comments can figure that out for me. But but you see what I mean? They made a decision. So it kind of is going along uh, that that whole discussion too. You see what I mean? So I think there's there's a few aspects. Well, doesn't uh, Tracer's like API like cashes out the Bitcoin immediately? Like uh, you automatically get the amount that's at that point in time where the Coinbase, when you kind of go ride the waves and spin it as it's going. So, uh, I mean, just the headaches I'm seeing between people sending BCH to Bitcoin addresses. Like maybe this is to avoid any headache from uh, someone sending Bitcoin to this API and then saying they lost their Bitcoin because it didn't go through correctly. I'm just thinking that could save them a lot of, you know, uh, troubleshooting. Yeah, down. that's. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's definitely. I mean, um, but I mean, you have to think about why is BitPay. Um, um, I mean, BitPay has a lot of users and a lot of customers, and they, they, they've been, you know, of course, listening to their users and customers. And why are they, 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 they found out that their users needed to. Um, were complaining about the fees, and it was too high. So that's why I mean that's why that's where it stems from. I mean their decision to to support uh, a fork that might lead to lower fees, which then allows their users to you know continue um, using their products or their exchange and whatever they have. Um, you know, so that's where that's where that 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 whole issue. As, as I know you guys know, and everyone else probably listening knows that. But I mean that's where that's where it all comes boils down to. Um, Trezor taking off that API. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just an API with exchange rate. I mean, I, you know, you could just do that yourself. It's, it's very simple to. They, of course, want to avoid confusion. I mean, if Bitcoin uh, SegWit um, has, you know, it's cost this much and the other one costs that much, of course, they don't want the confusion there. Um, but uh, we'll ultimately, I mean, it's it boils down to to. The usage of Bitcoin. I mean, we all want the fees to be lower. I, I, I assume so. As a wallet provider, for example, BTC.com, um, it's in our interest, or it's 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 useful for us for if our users are using, you know, it's low fees because then there's more usage. People spend it. I mean, we're a wallet, so you store, you send, you receive. That's that's what a wallet does. Um, I'm not, you know, I mean, it's also good for the for i mean bitcoin is to, is, is to be used right i mean that's what it is it's it's not, it's not you know just i mean holding is fine i hold bitcoins too but you know it should, should be used as well so lower fees is what these businesses want it's natural i mean it's part of their business yeah but i mean that that comes into kind of a couple of different issues like the, the most important of which i think is you know, consistency because like I like I, I disagree heartily, although I do understand where where a business like BitPay is coming from in this. But ultimately, with the service they provide, 
like the, that consistency is one of the most important aspects. And, and what they're doing in trying to push forward with a contentious fork like this is, is destroy that consistency in, in a number of ways, like the, the potential value of the assets that their customers are dealing in, the the number of uh, connections as far as the, the liquidity between different economic actors, like the, they're destroying that entire connection graph between consumers and merchants uh, as far as like people are going to fall on different sides of this work now. And that completely precludes any ability to interact on an economic level. But I mean, to, to get really harsh, like ultimately at the end of the day, how I personally feel about it is like uh, any particular company's business model isn't really Bitcoin's problem. Like, I, I mean, yes, at the end of the day, we all want fees to be as cheap as possible, but that needs to be balanced with a number of other things. Like, for instance, the the actual stability in, in a, some kind of level of decentralization. Like, if we don't have some kind of ceiling guaranteeing the cost of validating everything, then you start to draw into question the whole stability of everything because it's ultimately a data structure that everybody communally validates and everybody agreeing on what is valid is really what makes a coherent system out of this. And so the more you raise that ceiling and, and the easier you make it to, to push that ceiling up, you, you limit the amount of actors and you, you really start to to deform things from from a, a peer to peer layer into more of a hierarchy where the vast number of people just have to trust that the data structure they're getting little snippets of is actually being validated under the rules they want it to and the smaller number of people that can actually afford to validate it are effectively in, in charge of what is valid and, and they're there's physically isn't even a way for anybody outside of that small group to ascertain whether something valid or not just due to the sheer cost of it. And, you know, I, I really do feel for businesses like BitPay, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, I, like I'm here for Bitcoin. Like I'm not here just to support any particular companies in the space. And if some company's business model isn't really compatible with where most of the users want to take Bitcoin, well, kind of sucks at the end of the day, but that's how markets work. Like everybody can't win. But I mean, uh, ultimately every fork that's ever going to happen is going to be contentious. So we're, we're never going to get hundred percent. Everyone's not going to, uh, there's always going to be someone that disagrees with what you got, what anyone's going to be doing. So this whole uh, contentious fork that you hear be throwing around, it's, 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 uh, it's always going to be contentious. It's just going to be some people that are going to not want to do whatever some other people are doing so i mean um and ultimately uh uh yeah i i'm also here for bitcoin we're all here for bitcoin i i hope and i, I assume um um I, I i mean um who decides what bitcoin is at the end of the day i mean is it who is it is it party a party b I mean, I, I believe, I believe that, that the market decide, I mean, if, if, if anyone wants to do fork or, or, or even bring it back to, to, to like, you know, Bitcoin and how it was three years ago, do it. Let's see which one, which one the users want to use it and which one has the most price and where, where, um, where we see more, more usage that that's, that's, I mean, it, it's fine. It's a it's big experiment. I mean, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, having uh, other people try or other parties try to 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 do their own thing. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, um, that's why that's why BTC.com. I mean, we're we're supporting both chains. I mean, we've built we're building and we've built um, a replay protection for a wallet. So we're supporting both chains. I mean, that's 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 the I think that's the professional and the the right way to do it let, let, let everyone i mean if you want to try on this chain or you want to try on that chain okay it's fine i think i think a lot of people agree with that it's just that when 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 uh people or 
groups or companies or whoever uh you know calls one thing btc and then the other thing btc2 because of course they say that we're the real btc everyone thinks they're the real one then it's confusing for people and that's why people get get a little butt hurt on all sides you know everyone gets angry because of that so i mean i i think that's cool you guys built in replay protection already into the wallet that's really good because that is something that people need and they need it to be easier you know easier than it is now so that's not a total mess so so what are going to be the tickers what's going to be the ticker for um the 2x <laughs> I was waiting. Well, see, that's kind of. Yeah. I was waiting for that question. So, see, that's that's kind of like my only problem, real quick, to just add to what yeah. Dio said. It's like, like if if people want to fork off of a Bitcoin or or like have some other system derived from it to compete with it, like I have no problem with that. And like I, I kind of want to point to like Bcash as an example of that. Like you know, nobody attacked it or like DDoSed it into oblivion. Like it, it went its own way and it's doing its own thing. But like my issue is when when we get into that kind of gray area, well then I have to fall back to self consistency to like the simplest definition I can, and in my mind that's Satoshi defined Bitcoin when he released the first client, and when it comes to contention and not everybody being unanimous in agreement on changing that, and even in my mind with that personally, although others would disagree with me when you break compatibility with that original code base that's not bitcoin anymore and like it, it it's it's derived from it like there's the same balances and it, people are totally free to do that but i just think definitionally like in the situation comparing the thing that's still compatible with the original client to the thing that's not is 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 obviously bitcoin in my opinion so it has to be compatible with the original chain is that what you mean yeah the the original client that satoshi wrote i mean but is anything compatible with that now yeah i mean at literally every single change to consensus rules since day one has been a soft fork and i mean like the the efficiency of the code to actually be able to catch up to the tip of the chain might be in question but the chain, if if the code was efficient enough to actually validate things up to the tip, all of the the contents of the current chain would be considered valid by it. Okay. All right. Well, just to, <laughs> I don't I don't have anything to say. Uh, I mean, just it's, to a, be it's a good point. He has a good point. Um. um I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I agree with the whole um, decentralization. I mean, uh, we could still have decentralization with bigger blocks. I mean, it's fine. That's not. There's no issue there. Uh, and Satoshi's white paper said it would be become much more um, specialized. This uh, this section of uh, Bitcoin. So he did say he. And it does state that in the white paper. I mean. Um, and anyway, these nodes run in the house. You need very, like, very good broadband for it to be even efficient, for it to even efficiently be, you know, for it to be useful. So yeah. Well, the thing is, well, uh, well, before I forget, because I didn't, I didn't get a clear answer. What's the ticker going to be on the two X? You don't know yet. So um, um, this has been a this has been difficult to. Um, it's, it's been there's been a, there's been discussions every single day as soon as you know as soon as uh, well, we signed the NY. Um, so right now we're gonna be calling it you know um, BT one and BT two until the market decides which one is BTC. Okay. Um, okay, and then about the the node thing, I don't think the point of it always is that it's efficient in or like hyper efficient in relaying it just should be good it can be good enough so that you can verify yourself yeah, yeah. the idea is that you can verify yourself yeah. um, and if i have to have a, a 20k usd node even <laughs> though that's a meme now uh then it's kind of hard for me to be for everyone or everyone to have the possibility to do it, it doesn't mean that of course everyone doesn't want to do that but if if they did they should be able to otherwise what's the point 
because that's, that's the whole point of the of having Bitcoin or one of the main points, right? Yeah, that's 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 a point, and I mean, um, I, I that, that's why I always fall back to where uh, like um, my my personal goal is to just make uh, put cryptocurrency uh, in the hands of each mainstream user be it what it is i mean it's better than i think it, just cryptocurrency this whole this whole space is is uh, evolution in, in 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 human technology and finance and um be it what it is i mean there should be there should be a, de a decentralized and um privacy oriented uh currency um there should be one that's quicker and more efficient to be sent around i mean that's that's it's it's only the beginning where we're, we're still we're still seeing where where it takes us okay so what a, all right just to go on a little tangent um is it important for more people or what do you think is it more important for more people to use it like mainstream people or is it more important that it stays uh yeah that it stays censorship resistant in the sense that you know nobody can stop you from using it you don't have to depend on a third party to use it because you know there's always going to be that trade-off um somewhat you know what i mean i mean of course it's going to be easier for the mainstream person to use some kind of third party at least at the beginning right than for everyone to have their own wallets even if it's a spv wallet you know i don't know they have like a coinbase app or i mean you guys are a wallet but you know whatever if they had a, you know that something that makes it easier for them to use and they would just be or if they use spv wallet and then they connect to the 20k node then you know that would be quote easier uh because they wouldn't have to do as much work maybe so should is that good or should it or just you know creating or what should, what's the goal you know is the goal more people or is the goal to ensure that it's still stays decentral and still stays strong Where's the <laughs> little philosophical? Yeah, it's 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 a good question. Um, uh, um, I mean, we're a wallet, so of course we want us we want to see more usage. We want to see more people downloading our wallet and and using Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's our that's what our that's our that's our company. I mean, that's what wallets do. We want to see more people using it, so it's just natural that that's what I strive for every day. You know. Um, I, 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 I still I still I'm not too convinced about how it has to that we still have to keep it very small and 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 then if we keep it small and and whatnot that it's more decentralized and more power, censorship resistant I mean I, 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 we can I mean what what are, there's all, yeah, yeah what are the does anyone know maybe Shinobi or Rick or Axon or anyone else knows how big are the blocks now like because of you know we have segwit and all this stuff so how much what kind of size do we have now um effectively they were pushing 1.2 1.3 megabytes i think they might be uh a little on the lower end now the uh because the segwit uh use percentage per block has kind of drifted down a little bit since the peak okay so it's the weight it's the block weight is that right rick yeah that's what i was gonna say it's like it has to do with uh the weight now it's not really like a, a one not a base size so it could go under or above i think uh i'm not really 100 percent on either but i do know it's like a block weight now okay yeah, so it's, is that it's pretty much like you discount the data size of a of the signature part in a segwit transaction and then there's the ultimate weight limit which is like the non-signature and the signature parts with but the the signature part is kind of discounted as like this we'll treat it like this is less data than it really is is that compatible with the with uh the first implementation shinobi yeah i mean like pre pretty much what um will happen if like a segwit node is talking to a non-segwit node like uh, all the information is like kind of broken up into its individual pieces like you have the transactions with segwit like the individual pieces of it and what it'll do is it'll c construct the block differently so like instead of putting the whole block together with all the segwit data it'll just strip out the signature data and then put that together and send that off minus the segwit part so it's it's kind of just a difference in how 
uh, the data gets communicated. Okay. What's the next topic, Shinobi? Well, we're gonna we got kind of off topic. It says GB minor still, or do we want to go on that, or we want to go to um... <sighs> that that thing? Because because you know how like everybody everybody just grabbed on one block that didn't have a signal and said, "Oh my God, they changed sides," and. Mm. Yeah, they, they didn't because people just grabbed one random piece of data. Uh, GB minor? Mm -hmm. they, they've confirmed that they have not withdrawn from the uh, New York agreement. Um, they've actually just been testing some uh, upgrades, and so obviously that affected the signaling in their block. But uh, I was actually saying this, I believe, on the show uh, when we mentioned it in the mumble. You know, this don't kind of jump the gun on one block because there's a, a whole lot of explanations for why something could change per block. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're we're also doing testing and whatnot, and I think I think one we mined one block without NYA tag as well, but it was just that we were just moving, doing some testing the technical group. So it's not something to be, you know, it's not all of a sudden they sign away testing occurs and. They might just go off. They might have forgotten or whatever. So happens. Mm -hmm. Everybody on both sides of this whole thing is just quick to grab information that validates whichever point of view they hold. Yeah. Yeah. What does so? What is BTC dot com signaling? Uh, we signed in the the New York agreement, so we're we're going with Segwit two X for sure. Uh, yeah. And what kind of stuff are you testing? Can you tell us, or is it secret? Uh, it was uh, Ch Chinese ancient secrets, as someone posted the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, yeah, thank you. No, I was trying to figure out if this is the if there are some you know new evil minor uh, boost uh, kind of thing, or is this just you know I mean minor I mean pools need to do tests right to optimize and do whatever they need to do. Yeah, yeah, I mean we're, we're always optimizing and trying to try to make it better and. Um, I know um, we're we're always trying to make things better for our users. So and there's just normal testing per day. We don't just sit around all day uh, arguing on Twitter. We we work. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess let's uh, let's try to slip in the next topic so we can actually get through to talking about uh, BTC.com. Uh, somebody else is kind of thinking along the same lines as you guys, actually providing uh, replay protection in a in a simple, easy way that doesn't make people's heads explode. So uh, I do believe that this uh, chain splits is uh, what Eric Lombroso was talking about on Twitter the other day with a, a non-custodial automated splitter. Um, you guys can obviously, uh, it's uh, chain splits on Twitter. You know, reach out to them and try to get an invite to their Slack group. I think they're uh, probably still fleshing out designs and everything for how to actually implement that safely. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to be using that thing pretty quick, I think, if this work actually goes through. Yeah, I was excited to see that, and uh, I'm surprised that more people haven't been replying to that just yet, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a pretty popular tool. Yeah, so we've built that tool as well. I mean, we, that's, we, we're the, I, I think we were the first ones to come out with uh, any communication that we're doing something. We're doing the same thing, basically for our wallet users, so. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to ask you, like, um, how, how does that work under the hood? Are you guys kind of just uh, taking advantage of the fact that you have a, a pool to actually be able to split things yourselves? Um, so what we do is we tank UTXOs, which only exist on S2 exchange, and then uh, that, that in fact makes the transaction invalid in the legacy chain. And we're going to be handling uh, the tainting of UTXOs. Um, the rest, you're going to have to ask the development team. I mean, that's uh, yeah. Well, that's basically it. I mean, it's pretty much uh, what I was talking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's obvious solution. You guys got the the whole stack from a wallet all the way down to a mining pool. I mean, <laughs> why not take advantage of it in a situation like this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we also provide. I mean, uh, we're we're always trying to utilize the mining pool, you know, to provide, for example, we provide accelerated transactions for our users 
Um, we, we give them a credit per one credit per month so they can accelerate a transaction. They pay a lower fee. They get an optimal transaction uh, 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 time. So their transaction is uh, uh, confirmed as if they paid uh, the, you know, the, the higher fee. Um, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, we utilize the mining pool for various features and we're going to be rolling out more things like this. I mean, we, we do have a clear, I mean, that is an advantage for us as, uh, you know, we can, so we should utilize it and we are, and this, this is, this is, this is one have you, Yeah. Have you guys, uh, you know, considered you have any plans for uh, lightning network integration? Cause I, I've always thought that mining pools were in a very good position there both to kind of provide liquidity uh, in terms of running actual routing hubs and then also when it comes to monitoring like closeout transactions like if you're offering a wallet service as a pool then you would be a miner directly monitoring things to submit the right like closeout if somebody tried to cheat somebody with a channel or something um we have no plans right now for line network but we are um, releasing segwit soon so we're working on that Oh, that's good news. Well, you guys want to roll on to the, the last two bits of uh, 2X news, I guess? Yeah, yeah let's get that really quick. We, we've got a statement from OKX, and they are essentially, uh, it just looks like they're kind of reconfirming some things they mentioned before. Like, they obviously, they have the split tokens. Um, in the event the fork actually occurs, uh, the initial chain right now will be referred to as BTC and the BTC1 split tokens will be credited one-to-one. -one. And then obviously the same for the, the 2X token and their BT2 tokens. And also if no fork occurs, then the value of the, the 2X token hits zero. You know, everything's redeemed to the BTC1 token one-to-one. -one. And it's, it's, it's pretty much just reiterating, you know, the same way of handling the fork. And uh, obviously that the, the chain now is, is going to be BTC or Bitcoin as far as they're concerned. And then move on to Ituro uh, a little quick. Uh, th this platform actually kind of shocked me because they're, they're going full out. They've completely ignored the Bitcoin gold fork. And they're actually going to be shutting down their entire operations and automatically closing all positions um, prior to the fork and actually shutting everything down until things are settled. Although they have confirmed that they will continue to refer to the, the current chain as Bitcoin and uh, the, the 2X fork as a, a derivative coin under Bitcoin 2X or B2X uh, ticker. So, mm, it's okay. It's kind of like a, this is like a Mexican standoff. <laughs> you yeah. get all the businesses positions. Yeah, it's all, I think I think Itoro just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> they just don't. Right. I think they have the development the capacity to to do any of the things that, well, for example, we're doing. Well, I was going to ask. Uh, you know, I think these uh, smaller companies, you know, they uh, they're probably questioning like if they got the manpower to handle this situation because one thing that I've you know, I downloaded your wallet today and I was flipping through the Play Store at the reviews and like uh, there was only a few small bad reviews, but they were all people saying I sent Bitcoin to our BCH to my Bitcoin address and I didn't get it. And I just can't imagine really that diff that's going to be huge when B2X comes out, like people saying I sent this here and I didn't get it. And then people are going to be swamped with support tickets. They're not going to really be able to function as a development team. And so, like, I feel like maybe they're taking a step out just to be like, you know, um, we don't want to handle this at all. We'll wait till it's till it's over. Because, uh, I mean, like, I'm sure you guys got a little swamped after BCH and you're probably preparing for the B2X thing, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh uh that is that is a, that's definitely an issue i mean it's gonna be a, we've been working non-stop uh since all this um all these folks have started occurring um and we're gonna it's not gonna change the, the the workload is not gonna stop i mean um we do get we do get a lot of we we have gotten users that sent bitcoin cash to this and that, that but we, we've our developers have built a way to 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 you know for you to withdraw it through your uh, backup PDF, if you send to the back, if you send BCH to BTC, 
but it takes a lot of development time to do that. It's like you, they have to handle each case individually. It's and but but it's not it's not only Bitcoin Cash. I mean, we get we get a lot of we get a lot of um, a lot of users uh, send their multi signature transactions from other altcoins to their Bitcoin address because it starts with a three, and then they you know they think that it's I don't know I don't know right, what right. that is. But, but it happens. Yeah, yeah. It's easy, especially for a user that is not not well versed. So it happens all the time, and it's it's just it's just we have to educate the market. I mean, that's what we just we have to continue that. And yeah, I do I do I do agree that there is gonna there is gonna be confusion. Um, but ultimately, I mean, we're still we're only nine. You know, we're not we're just started. Uh, so let's let's we're gonna iron out some problems. So we're gonna be some people are gonna want to do that and this. And, uh, you know, um, it's uh, ultimately for the, the user to decide what they want to do. I mean, if they want to, uh, uh, you know, something that's more oriented to this side, to that side, then that's them. But us as a wallet provider, we have to just provide what the user wants. So we cannot uh, decide for them. We don't want to do that. We just want to give them the possibility to, you know, of course, we're not going to be doing like this. I hope there's. I don't know. I I, I I hope not, but I foresee a, a hard fork every other week coming out. Bitcoin, petroleum, Bitcoin, this. Uh, Could you really handle all the support tickets? So you know, people are going to be spending it, dress, dress. Like that's where I worry. Like we get all these forks, then it's like you got to just sort of stop paying attention to them at some point. Yeah. So um, it is. It is. It is a hard thing to do, and we're always. You know, we're always communicating with the community and, and and looking into everything very thoroughly i mean um uh um however i mean segwit 2x is it's a different it's, it's it's different in the sense that there's a lot of companies supporting it and uh there is a lot of uh i mean there is there is a there's a there's a, there's a big amount of people who are not supporting it but there is also a big amount of people or companies and or and people that are supporting it so um it is it is a it is a important fork so we will provide support for that but not you know not some dude in a basement is going to hard fork bitcoin expect us are to... you telling me that bitcoin silver is not an important fork <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who That's are you true. to say yeah who are you to say that bitcoin silver is not an important fork you know that could be the next i mean when when Bitcoin 2x fails and 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 Bitcoin core fails and maybe we're all on Bitcoin silver, right? You know, that's the that's Satoshi's maybe that's Satoshi's true vision. Yeah, maybe maybe so. I hope so. Bitcoin <laughs> silver. No, seriously. I just, that, I just wanted to I say I, I'm sorry. I just want to say I understand y'all's position where it's like you're kind of in a rock and a hard place right here and you know, that's what I think El Toro is just like we're going to step out for this. Yeah, I think the small, we had another one. I think it was Gatecoin um, on a few episodes ago, and they said just like, we're not doing anything. If you want any, any of your 2X stuff, just go somewhere else. We're not doing it, basically. And they yeah, like, no you know, actually, but they don't, um, but that's like what you guys said. They're, they're not huge. So they don't want to fuck their own exchange up. So they're probably just like, you know, okay, we're not going to deal with this, guys. We're just using the normal. And then, you know, when it's all over, maybe we decide again. But for now, if you want any of that stuff, just sorry, we're not doing it because I don't think they have enough resources for all that. Yeah, well, yeah, like oh, well, uh, we'll handle it for you. No, Para actually clarified that. Like uh, Alejandro mm -hmm. is, I think, kind of right with uh, Etoro. Like uh, in um, Gatecoin's mm -hmm. case, um, yeah. they're pretty much just using uh, Nicolas Dorier's uh, setup and libraries, and he has no intent of creating any 2x support so they pretty oh, yeah. much just defaulted on uh, that because of that all oh, right exactly yeah well i mean i mean that also makes sense i mean if you're an exchange you don't want to break your exchange because there's 2x or there's silver or gold and whatever other other thing coming up so you kind of and it's also and now so it's also a little weird because now the you know now the cat's out of the bag i mean we had bitcoin cash we had bitcoin gold i guess is coming you got all this other shit, and then and they're and they are getting listed somewhere, right? So now the cat's out of the bag. Now there's going to be a ton more, just like Rick was saying. So you know, it's just going to be a matter of, um, you know, the, if if enough customers want it, then service providers will have to add it. But you know, at what point do they have enough resources? 
Yeah, ultimately, I mean, it, it is it is um, it is our goal to continue, you know, a user acquisition. We need we need more users, and um, if there's something in the market that a lot of users are using, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, transactions and and and, and businesses accepting it, then it's just natural for a company to to, to move into it. But of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 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 a line. I mean, I guess there's gonna be. I mean, uh, the, uh, this this industry has evolved, and we evolve at a lightning fast uh, pace. I mean, and we'll find a way to to, to we'll find some rules or some set here to for the next coming thing. It might be not you know I don't know what's next. I mean, it's like a month every month. There's a new flavor. Somebody... I, I got a tough question for you. Like right now, obviously, you're you're gonna continue referring to the current chain as Bitcoin, but uh, one uh, under what conditions would you make the decision to refer to two X as Bitcoin uh, as opposed to something else? And also, uh, like, would you apply those conditions equally to something else? Like, like, would that be a, a bar that you just use in this one instance, or would it be kind of a ruler that you establish to use for all future incidents like this? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, first and then, first, first foremost, I mean, the decision is not mine to take; it's the whole team to take. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, it's a hard question. I mean, I, I think, I think, uh, I think we're just have to gonna wait and see, I, I, let the market decide whatever is, it, it's a difficult question. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things to look into there. I mean, there's many things you gotta look at. The power, you know, the hash, the, the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's see. Well, let's wait for them. Let's wait for the market to decide. I think um, that we consider um, that we that we are looking at. Um, but I mean, I mean, I don't want I don't want to don't want to say too much because you know we 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 really to. Provide a platform for our users. Um, we'll see how we'll see how the, the 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 whole entire market evolves in the future, whatever it may be. Right, well, let's try like. try to get you out, get you out of the hot seat here. <laughs> I mean, um, like, do, do you want to tell us like a, a little bit about like the the company in general? You know, like I, I talked a little bit about this before we went on air. You guys were originally the uh, the Block Trail um, Explorer and Wallet, and then uh, you were purchased by Bitmain, and then that kind of spun off the mining pool after the fact. Yeah. yeah. So we were we were a startup uh, based in the Netherlands. Um, we're still based in the Netherlands, and uh, Bitmain acquired us. Um, and uh, Bitmain on BTC.com, the website. So we felt that was a you know that is a stronger uh, brand name for a for a Bitcoin wallet. So uh, we rebranded to BTC.com. Um, we expanded our team. We're expanding right now. We're actually looking for developers. So if there's any developers right now looking or uh, watching, um, please get in contact with us. We're always uh, we help with relocation and everything. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, Bitmain, um, um, yeah, we we added a mining pool to our operation, which uh, of course um, it's, uh, it's a good business to have the mining pool business. And we're right now third. I think I think I checked last yesterday was we're number three in the world. Um, we have a whole team dedicated for for the mining pool. Uh, you know they. Uh, they, there's a sales team that goes and looks for people, you know, for miners that, you know, want to, we team that goes to the miners and tells them to switch on over, you know. So it's, uh, it's, 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 and, uh, um, our team is in, in Beijing. So we have, uh, so we have, yeah, we have two, we have one, it's one company or uh, one team, but there's based in Beijing and Amsterdam. Okay. Like one one of the most interesting things like about the mining pool, I kind of 
I would, would like a little clarity on is uh like h- how much influence does Antpool or, or Bitmain have uh, like on the, on the the control of the BTC.com pool like as far as the clients it runs or how it operates itself because like it, we, when it comes to like hash rate and, and who's really controlling it like it, it really is a lot of just speculation because it's hard to get like actual confirmable data like like anybody can point their hash rate at a number of different pools or, or split it around and i i feel like the, the public perception has always kind of been that btc.com via btc uh, the the connect pool out of israel are all kind of just like fronts can, for, for ant names yeah you can go I, ahead and answer. Sorry. connect btc is the main i mean it's a uh... It is Bitmain. So it's R and D uh, division of Bitmain. So, uh, um, but via BTC, I think was just I think Bitmain on the minor, minority uh, stakeholder in that company. Um, BTC.com is Bitmain. We are we are Bitmain. We were acquired and merged. We are Bitmain. Um, uh, but we only we have our different you know different hardware and. And we go out and look. So a lot of people think it's just I don't know. There, there is miners. There is miners out there, individual miners. And we go out there. We meet them and we tell them let's switch on over. You know, we give them the whole sales pitch. I mean, it's uh, it's it's what it is. It's and we you know, we know we always try to we're always trying to beat Ampool with their hash rate. I mean, we want more hash rate than Ampool. Yeah. So, do you have to do you have to go on a lot of meetings at really crazy hours? Because uh, uh, everyone is in different parts of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to some pretty interesting mining uh, farms, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> okay, right. In the middle of the Chinese mountains or somewhere secret yeah. location. Did you have to take a helicopter? Were you blindfolded? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's, so that's what happened. We were we, we had to go to a secret location. We were blindfolded, then helicopter. Then we were shot out of the helicopter. And then... Um, Parachute? Uh, yeah, yeah, parachute, of course. <laughs> But I would say, yeah, and uh, to the secret location where we were eye scanned and, and can you? Uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to get. I can't, I can't talk. I can't I talk anymore get, because I know I don't want to get too far. Robert, <laughs> but I do have another. But I do have another question because because I because I, I met Alejandro at a conference and I wanted to ask. Uh, can you tell us just really quickly the top three or four questions you get? Uh, that are real typical from people because it's kind of funny and and see what happened is he met you made your own meme to kind of counter it the evil Chinese miner or something like that so just yeah. tell us the the top you know three questions that people ask every time and you know what what you kind of you know how you deal with it <laughs> great question uh, uh, the ASIC boost question a lot uh that's 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 a that's a big okay one. so um, you mean just like so just does btc.com mm-hmm. use asic boost or is that the no, kind of type of question because you're a pool so you can't use it but so what or what exactly. or how so, would that work okay uh-huh. no i mean i mean they they the people just base that question like that asic boost they just just throw throw a crazy sentence and add asic boost onto it i get i mean they've come up with there's people out there that are really they're, I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're thinking. It's like these far out conspiracy theories. I mean, uh, do you work for the Chinese government? It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great one. That's a great. One. Uh, I don't remember because uh, I actually I missed what? I missed your talk, but I I was just talking to you and everyone else about some of the questions that got asked. I think the Chinese. I know ASIC boost came up. I don't know about the government one, but that's a good one. Do you work? Are you like an agent for the Chinese KGB or something like that? Uh, that would be you know an intelligence service. Okay. Any other any other final one that you get a lot that just comes um, up? I think it, I think it's interesting to see because you know you give talks at conferences about this and you're you're cool. You're reasonable. You know you know you guys signed New York Agreement, but you're not like uh, going up on your presentation going like saying like um, 
Bore Extreme is the worst thing for Bitcoin, or I don't know. I mean, you might. I don't know what your opinion is, but you know, it's it's like it's it's cool. It's it's a it's a different. You might have a different opinion, but it's it, but it's but it's cool how you present it. So that's why I wanted to ask. Okay, so what's the final uh, question that you get? Um, top the third one to make it a three. So, so I mean, I mean to 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 talk to, about that point. I mean. Um, uh, you know, our team, our team does. Uh, we believe in competition. Competition is good. I mean, if Blockstream is doing something, that's great. Or if uh, Party A is, you know, Company A is doing nothing, you know, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Com com I, I believe in competition. So does the rest of my team. I'm not gonna go and and we're not. It's not. It's, uh, we're you know we're not. I believe we're not children here. We're not just gonna be. Just uh, my product is better than yours. Uh, no, it's not like that. I mean, it's fine. Go work, work on your stuff. Good. Uh, uh, you seem like a, you know, like you're doing a good product. And anyway, that's beside the point. Well, I, um, I yeah, mean, I, got, I, I got, I got, I got to bust your balls about that, Alejandro. I mean, Jihan Wu literally directly goes on. I'm used, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. <laughs> so, so, so. I mean, Go he literally it. the other day just said um, Blockstream Core is, is crippling the, the Bitcoin network for the big banks. And I, I mean, like, I believe me, like, I know not everybody like working in, in that company or like you yourself actually believes that. But I mean, clearly the CEO is kind of publicly pushing that narrative directly himself. I mean, there's nothing I can do if, if I mean, whatever other person does with their own time or their own opinion, that's their, that's their own problem. That's their own, uh, that's, that's their own decision. Um, um, but I mean, that, that's kind of what like worried me and like why, why I asked like, uh, you know, a little about the, the degree of control that Bitmain has over, uh, BTC.com. I'm more thinking Jihan because, you know, I'll be, as a user, like I, I have no connection to any specific business in this space. So I am probably on a healthy degree of paranoid, I'll admit, when, when it comes to everything in this space. And when I see like the CEO of, of a company like Bitmain with such a huge influence in the space, like kind of propagating that narrative, it kind of worries me what he might do with the influence that he has in different regions of the ecosystem um uh, uh, uh we are part of bitmain it's a bitmain i mean it's part of bitmain um jihan is our ceo um, um i can either you know uh okay I, I can't comment about what he talks about on twitter i mean that's yeah, wrong. That's, just, that's, that's up yeah. to him like I comment on Twitter, on Twitter, all these fun, fun stuff too. I mean, it's it's up to you. I mean, but we are part of Bitmain, so um, want to. We're a wallet provider, and 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 like I said earlier, I mean, it's just you know providing a good product for our users. That's our that's our goal. That's that's it. That's that's it. Well, and and that's that's kind of like what like like annoys me most in this space you know it's like I, to kind of use like bitmain and um coinbase as examples um like these are both companies that have the the positioning and, and the resources to really push things in a technological way to the, the absolute extreme that they could like like I, I brought up you know the potential of how like a, a business like btc.com could integrate something like lightning network in a, in a very user-friendly secure way because of that top-down way that they they both provide a wallet service and are miners themselves that can directly like uh, preferentially confirm their users and like coinbase in, in the exact same way like the way that they're a, a big like gateway in, in the United States and a lot of the West, like they have a, a big network of users and like it's an alternative, like of something like lightning network could be a, a very well integrated thing as far as consumers interacting with merchants, actually making the exchanges uh, own operations internally more efficient. And I just see because like the, the heads of these companies kind of are just wrapped up in, in these narratives. 
that th those companies' resources aren't really being optimally allocated to, to get the most benefit for their customers. Maybe I would I would also for our say customers. I don't, I don't, wait. Let me let me respond. Let me respond. The, I mean, I um, it, it's it, like ultimately like what a company does with their own business is up to them. I mean, it's who's to say that Lightning Network is I mean, Lightning Network is fine. I've, I've we have a test and Lightning Network in the office that we use. I've, it's, it's 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 great. But I mean, yeah. is, is that the is that, is that the answer? Is that does is that the answer for for Coinbase and and, and Bitmain? Do, do we have to move on? It'll be a Lightning Network, or be it uh, over? Is that is that? I mean, it's it's ultimately a, up to them to decide. Well, yeah, it is. But like that, that's kind of like what bothers me about it is that like there there is not going to be a singular answer for any of the problems that face the system. Like it, we're, it's going to need a Swiss army knife of dozens of them. And I, I feel like too, like too many businesses on this space are just like laser focused to, to make a pun uh, on a, a singular like answer for everything and ignoring the way that, that smaller answers for parts can be applied piecemeal. And like that's like it's just kind of like to draw back to like uh, what I said about BitPay earlier and, and the fact that, you know, you, you can replace a lot of aspects of these businesses. And it's like it, it kind of bothers me on a systemic level because if like what I see and perceive as far as the situation is concerned continues to be the trend, then it's it's going to be an externality for the whole ecosystem because eventually uh, businesses that are not optimally allocating their resources are going to buckle. But a lot of these businesses are just so big in the space that you can't escape kind of a, a systemic fallout on the ecosystem as a whole if and when that were to happen. And it just seems to always kind of boil down to just these personally driven narratives that, that are – this seem to be fueled more by like emotion or, or reaction to like personal interactions between people rather than like actually just looking at all the cards on the table. I disagree. I think, I think, uh, uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, businesses are, I mean, our, our business is working fine and um, our, our aim is to continue and, I mean, we're not we're not sitting around, you know, t t t like following our emotions. No, no, it's not. It's not us. It's going on. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to make no, like a not, personal not... comment about like the the whole team of of a business. But I mean, like ultimately, in a business, the the people on the top kind of call the shots as to how everything gets ran in the whole organization. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah, but I think I think uh, I mean. Most of these CEOs have gotten already to to be very successful companies, and uh, I think I think they 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 know what they're doing. So, uh, I mean, I mean, so of course, someone could make a bad decision. I mean, that can happen. I mean, anyone and any one of us. But uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think they're 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 fools. I don't think they're fools. I just Absolutely wanted not. to say all I wanted to say was that. Uh, Everyone needs to, you know, Twitter is Twitter and, you know, it's everyone likes to, you know, go on Twitter and talk to each other and troll each other a little bit and just, you know, keep in mind that it's Twitter though, it has its certain properties to it, you know, and so does Reddit. Reddit has its own properties, you know, there's certain styles for each mode of communication. So just keep that in mind. And I wouldn't necessarily say that, uh, I don't know how I can explain it. It's just, yeah, when you talk to people in person or you talk to them like this, it's a lot different and you can explain your opinions in long form and everyone, you know, can just, you know, Twitter is cool, but, you know, take a step back from that and don't, it's easy to, you know, take one sentence and out of context uh, real easy on Twitter for all, every, everybody does it. It's not once, I'm not going to say one side does it more than the other. I think everyone does it and, uh, which is just everyone keep that in mind. So that's why we need to have good conversations like this and just discuss things in, in 
we like we say on here as a kind of ongoing joke tone down the ethics no i'm just joking but uh but like <laughs> but um yeah i think twitter people don't take twitter as one person's maybe it's in other industries too i don't know but it seems like bitcoin uh, CEOs sometimes go a little bit crazy on Twitter and it's not just one company it's a lot of companies have that on Twitter we had so I think Brian Armstrong he sh I mean if whoever does PR for coinbase should just say Brian Armstrong you don't are not allowed on Twitter and then and maybe for Bitmain maybe Johan shouldn't be on Twitter too and like put images of people dying and stuff you know, but no, yeah, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's okay. That's what they do. That's fine. Every everyone knows it. I think some of the block stream guys, they tweet a whole bunch too, you know? So yeah. does um they do they do yeah. crazy tweets too, you know? Everybody does yeah. crazy tweets here. Everyone is going nuts with the a lot of the oh and uh what about um BitGo have an internal debate on Twitter between the CEO, the CTO on everyone, you know what I mean? It's just like Bitcoin you know, they just really go nuts on Twitter. So just keep that in mind. I don't know why they had an internal debate on Twitter uh, like that. That was probably the high. That was probably the craziest, top, the craziest example I've seen uh, lately. I think it was about two X too, right? It's like, yeah, Lop is like, hey, what are you doing? The other guy's like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, on Twitter. So you know, just keep in mind that all kinds of companies do crazy shit on Twitter. What happened to Lope, by the way, was was out of was way. Yeah, way, we talked about that a lot. Cool. That was nuts. That's not yeah. cool. Yeah. That's not cool. Yeah. He stayed. He he was he was here in Amsterdam. We had a great time. We went boating. It was, it was a great guy. I mean, I don't understand. See, that's that's a step too far. I mean, you can troll all day on Twitter. Uh, that's what you're into. You know, that's not that's not. Right. No, everyone. See, that's what I'm talking about. People <laughs> don't always realize that. How can it? How can a company owned by Bitmain go on a boat ride with Lop? Is that possible? You know. <laughs> no, I'm just. Yeah, great. Some people, yeah, but some people saying. think that's not possible. You know. <laughs> all of these disagree, like all of these rabid factional disagreements, are almost all entirely rooted at like the the tops of hierarchies in companies or like big figures. Like whenever I actually sit down and talk with people like like you here right now, how Alejandro, like it's a reasonable discussion. When when we pull out of those little limited yeah. text mediums like Twitter or Reddit, where you're just talking at people and not with people, like we can have our fucking yeah. disagreements and we can talk them out. And and it's that's great. Like, that's what it's all about. I mean, I mean, we have to disagree. That's how we get anywhere. I mean, that's how we have. That's how we push the industry forward. We disagree. And eventually, something comes out, and that's how you know that's how it should be. We're not going to always agree, and we we're, we're we're all adults here, so let's 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 talk and keep it civil and move forward. Yeah, and I mean, like you know, it's like could kind of jump on that to like the this whole New York agreement. I mean, like you know, Alejandro, like I, I've. I haven't been here since the very beginning, but I've been here for like four or five years now. I've been here since 15, so I've been here for a long time. Yeah, you probably probably got here maybe a little bit before I did, or around the same time. But like, this is like a, a lot of the things going on right now, and like the contention, especially from people like me, is I have to be skeptical when I look at things. And like to, to the extreme, to the like, I can literally trust nobody. And when, when I see things like the, the New York agreement or like things like, you know, classic or, or XT or all, all these attempts to kind of make backroom deals and redefine things, like I immediately have to look at that as a social attack. Be, because when, when it comes to the network, you, you can attack it technically with hash rate or you can attack it socially to try and convince people to redefine it. And like, I, it's like just the confluence of events over like the past years are literally like my whiteboard of possible ways that you could attack things all happening together at once. And so for somebody like me, like wow. looking at Bcash, like looking at the 2X agreement, like I have to be skeptical and I find it very hard to 
kind of extend the benefit of the doubt universally. Like with Bcash, like I have literally, I, two years ago, I literally thought, hey, what if you just start forking off a bunch of different chains, but don't change the proof of work and just kind of let them stagger out there over a couple years. And then you can just play with the prices and make the hash rate dance like a puppet on a string. And when you start playing games like that, you can start leading hash rate away from the Bitcoin chain and spread it more evenly amongst all these other ones. And now you've brought all of those chains difficulties down to where all of them can be attackable simply by sacrificing one or like two of them. And like seeing Bcash now, now seeing Segwit 2x, like my fucking alarms are going off. And I find it very hard to not see this moving in the direction of an attack like that. Uh, well, this is, I mean, it's, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Um, I don't see it as an attack. Uh, I don't see it as, uh, you know, black and white deal or uh, um, ordeal. Um, a hash rate. I mean, I mean, we we continue to see a lot of uh, a lot of people. There's a lot of people beginning to mine, so the hash rate continues to increase. So, I mean, and ultimately, a miner is going to follow where the money is at. That's what that's what miners do. That's what they. That's why they they invest in these 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 mining machines so they can make money. Um. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't. I mean. It's it's a fair point, but there's a lot of ways you can attack Bitcoin. You can you could also say the same thing. I don't you know about uh, you know keeping the, the the block lower. I mean that could be for some people also an attack vector. You know or you know what the the the, the mainstream usage of Bitcoin. I mean if more if people become if you can't use Bitcoin because the fees are too high and you get you know less and less people using it, that can be seen as an attack. I guess. I mean. There's ways you can see it as a, there's there's many you can you can see it whatever you you know whatever it's it could that could be seen as attack this other thing can be seen as attack I mean well I mean I, I get what you're I believe, saying I believe so. I believe the evolution of of this is right now and I've been in Bitcoin since 2013 you know I've been in there I've been here for a while and I've seen the whole development you know since yeah since early 2013 and I mean I've always focused on the business side right so that's always been my that's where if I've been focused on but I've, I've been I've been here since 2013 um, yeah. and um, the I mean I, I, I I'd see it as a solution I think uh, a little bit and let the market decide I mean it ultimately is an anarcho capitalist let the market decide let's see what happens I don't, I don't it doesn't have to be looked on as an attack or anything let the market decide see which one is more used which uh, you know but, but see and, that's 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 my problem is like you know that's that problem I am okay with things competing, but okay, so but it's it's go. not a black and white competing over what's superior in two different systems. What's going on right now? It's it's a it's a semantical game to try to claim to be Bitcoin because everybody thinks whatever is seen as Bitcoin will just de facto win. But see, my problem with that is like immutability was the guarantee. And so if there's no consensus on changing something, then it defaults to what we have now. And I mean, some it, people might it, not like it, that, but yeah, like that, yeah. that might mean that we just don't ever hard fork. And I mean, there's other ways to do things like, you know, increase the block size or deal with issues like that, if that's the case. But like uh, what I see is in an attempt to undermine that, that very basic nature that if there's no consensus it's a default to what we have now it's more of a like no like this is the thing because uh this arbitrary group says so and like that worries me because that that really makes me scared in the long term of if if it can be done for an innocuous little thing well then what's to stop it from being done for something incrementally bigger and more fundamentally changing and then on and on and it it's it it really okay. it is a slippery slope that that is a legitimate thing to worry about well i mean it's it is it is a it is an interesting i mean it's a fair point like i said but um i think i think um i think 
uh, the market is going to decide what, what is, I mean, and we're going to keep going back to that because I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, it is, it is, it is something to see what it's going to be called Bitcoin. I mean, we, we, I don't know what's going to be, what's what it is. Um, what's it going to be called in the future? I don't know what these, what, what everyone's going to decide what point, you know, company A or B or whatever is going to say about that. Um, I think, I think, uh, uh, I think we're just going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. But I, 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 I think the market will decide what, Bitcoin is, um, well, that's, 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 that's what I think. All right. Well, I, I, anybody else got any, uh, any questions or some of the discuss? I've kind of just been grilling them on the hot seat a little bit. I kind of feel like a dick. Sorry. Sorry. Right, sorry. I think you covered Thank you. No, that, I appreciate the comment. I appreciate the questions. I was going to say, I think you covered it pretty well. Good. Thank you for coming on. Alan. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. We've been going for over an hour guys i think that uh want to thank alejandra for coming on and everyone else for we, we had our show a little bit little earlier today for our viewers um also everybody uh keep in mind in case you haven't noticed that europe has changed the time but u.s has not so if you're wondering why some of your schedules are not working today that could be one reason and uh that's one reason why we came at a kind of strange time as compared to some of our other times and yeah, I don't have any final words, but I think that is good to know. One uh, wallet that does have uh, replay protection for 2X already now is BTCCom, and that's pretty cool, actually. And, uh, you know, I think we'll be seeing more of that. So thanks a lot. And um, I, have, I have some final words to say. Um, yes, uh, go ahead. You guys asked me, you guys asked me what, um, what we would like. Uh, so we're going to communicate through I mean, um as a team and um we'll be able to we'll communicate in a, in a more concise manner or you know uh what we believe will be bitcoin in the future so stay tuned for that you can check our blog blog at bitc.com good uh, okay and then we so then after that we can get you on here and roast you <laughs> I was born, I was, I'm, I'm made for this okay cool <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to say a last thing, like, I, I really do appreciate you coming on, Alejandro. And I know I kind of sure. I put you under the microscope, good. but I, I really do appreciate when people actually try to engage in a civil discourse instead of just scream at each other on Twitter. <laughs> like, thank you like for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, everyone. Um, make sure to subscribe to their channel. Thanks, man. And I guess um, now that we're, we're at the outro bit, everybody should know by now that when I'm hosting, liking and subscribing is not optional. So push the <laughs> damn buttons. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.